think we'll talk about bullet stability a little bit. You talk about too fast a rifling twist, too slow a rifling twist. Visualize a bullet like a top. If you remember that when you were a kid, you'd spin a top really, really fast. You would sit there and spin and kind of wobble like this, and then get dead still. And then slow down more and more and start to wobble and wobble, wobble really bad and fall over. Well, the bullet's the same way. You launch it through the air and you spin it to make it stable. You make it, basically, you make a little gyro out of it. And if the bullet is spinning too fast, it vibrates slightly in the air as it goes. And when it gets perfect RPMs, it's dead still. And when it starts to slow down, it starts to wobble really bad, gets out of control, flips end over end and falls apart, whatever. I got a little chart here I, I just drew up to show you how fast the bullet is traveling or spinning when it's traveling through the air. Now, today, most bullets travel around 3,000 feet a second, and most guns' uh, barrels have a rifling twist of one turn and 12 inches or less. So if you launch a bullet at 3,000 feet a second, which is not abnormal, and one turn and 12, which is a little slower than most, the bullet is going at least 3,000 revolutions a second. Now, that's revolutions a second, not a minute. We take 3,000 revolutions a second and multiply it by a minute. We get 3,000 revolutions a second times 60 seconds. That equals, believe it or not, 180,000 revolutions a minute. That dude is spinning pretty fast. That's why some bolts come apart in the air. So, at that kind of RPMs, it's like a gyro. 180,000 revolutions a minute, it's like a little gyro. And as you, we talked earlier about the top, if it's overstabilized, it vibrates a little bit. When it's perfect, it doesn't vibrate at all. And when it gets really understabilized, it flops around and end over end and goes someplace else. The, the requirement for the amount of spin you have to have is dependent on the length of the bullet. So the longer the bullet, the faster the twist has to be, and the shorter the bullet, the slower the twist should be. Now, when I'm talking about this, bear in mind that a 30 caliber 150 grain bullet and a 55 grain 22 caliber bullet will be both stabilized at about 1 in 10 pretty well. It's we talk about the function of the length and the rifling, but we're assuming that the caliber is the same. If the caliber is smaller, the rifling twist doesn't have to be as fast. It's the ratio, then, of the diameter to the length. So when I say the longer the bullet, we're referring to the longer the bullet in relation to its diameter. It's better to have the rifling twist too fast than too slow. If the bullet is spinning too fast, it vibrates like this. But it stays on course pretty close, and it stays stable. It doesn't try to go end over end. And then it get out there a ways, and it slows down a bit. It'll, it'll even get a, a little bit tighter, and it's a little spinning, and it's a little wobbling, and it gets tighter. Bench rest shooters, of course, have very, very accurate loads and bullets, and they shoot very, very precise little tiny holes and little tiny targets. They have to have a very precise rifling twist because a tenth of an inch means the difference between first place and last place in a major match. For hunting and shooting and most plinking and stuff and light target shooting, if you're a little over-twisted, a little over-stabilized, it's not a problem. But if you're under-stabilized, it's a serious problem. And really under-stabilized, it'll be sideways in 50 yards. It'll be sideways in 25 yards. So you want to have your rifling twist at least adequate for the job. Now, how do you tell? It's easy. The longer the bullet the faster the rifling twist has to be, and the shorter the bullet, the less twist you need to have, the less revolution you have to have. Now, we're saying the longer the bullet. Therefore, if you have a blunt nose, flat base bullet that weighs 150 grains, and you have a long ogive bow tail base bullet at 150 grains, same caliber, the, the ogive, long ogive bow tail bullet's gonna have to have a faster rifling twist the weight is the same, but the length is different. The Ojai bullet will have a much longer, greater length. And instead of being stabilized at 1 in 12, it might well need a 1 in 9 to stabilize it if it's long enough. So it's the length, not the weight, that you're concerned with. So when you reduce the weight of the bullet, 
you may or may not need to go to a, or should I say increase the weight of a bullet, you may or may not need to go to a faster rifling twist because the length may be the same as what you've been shooting. So it's the length, and just remember that, it's the length. Another thing we talk about, you hear about, read about sometimes, but I don't talk, I don't ever talk about it, but is that yaw will affect you. Now, in this case, what they're talking about, I'm going to use a whole bullet now, a whole cartridge instead of a bullet so you can see it better. But what yaw is, is spinning off its axis. It's doing this. So you're going to have front yaw. You're going to have rear yaw. You're going to have front and rear at the same size. And you have front and rear opposite, doing like that. But this is not much of a problem in a bullet. You've got to remember it's going 180,000 revolutions a minute. If the bullet is out of balance very much, it's going to vibrate a little bit. But you see, it doesn't have time to get very far out because it's going 180,000 revolutions a minute. If it gets way out, the bullet's simply going to come apart. It's just going to blow up in the air. And some of you have seen bullets disappear. You get a puff of gray out there at 100 yards or 50 yards, and maybe a streak of gray is coming apart but hasn't done it yet. So when they talk about yaw, <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, if the bullet's that out of the balance, it's not going to shoot straight, and you shouldn't be shooting it. And if it's just a little teeny bit, it's not going to affect the point of impact for general shooting. Yeah, for a target... For a bench rest shooter, it would make a difference. And maybe for a 1,000-yard shooter, which is basically a bench rest shooter, uh, it could make a little difference. Now, we're talking, you know, tenths of inches, not inches. But that's enough to make a, between a first and a third or a fourth or a fifth in a 1,000 yards. So anyway, so much for that. Don't worry about it. Just remember, the longer the bullet, the faster the twist. The shorter the bullet, the slower the twist. And you're better to be overstabilized than understabilized. That's what I am, overstabilized. I'm a great guy. See you later.